Hello, everybody. I'm Satori Shakur, and welcome to Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove, where Detroit's talented artists take the stage and share insights into their performances. I'm so excited about this episode, curated by our partner organization, Detroit Public Theater. We begin with a piece written and performed by Henri Franklin entitled Views of Color in 846. Listen to me with your heart and tell me if they're lies. Later, we'll see a snippet of Eric Gutman's one-man show, From Broadway to Obscurity. I'm falling, baby, through the sky, through the sky. I'm falling, baby, through the sky. So take a seat. Get ready for Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Irv Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, the DeRoy Testamentary Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to be here with Sarah Winkler from Detroit Public Theater, one of the producing directors there and the curator for the two performances, Andre Franklin and Eric Gutman. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Satori. Oh, how did you come to curate uh, these two gentlemen in their performances? We chose two pieces that are deeply rooted in partnership and collaboration. Eric Gutman's piece um, was born out of a collaboration between Detroit Public Theater, Detroit Public Television, Chautauqua Theater Company, and the Buffalo PBS affiliate. And Henri Franklin's piece was born out of this national collaboration with The Breath Project. And that was an invitation that came to Detroit Public Theater to participate in just shy of a month after George Floyd's murder to amplify the voices of multidisciplinary artists of color. Can you just tell us what Detroit Public Theater's mission is? Detroit Public Theater's mission is to produce world-class theater um, with world-class artists in the city of Detroit and making sure that Detroit artists are connected to the national theater community as well. Thank you, Sarah, so much for being here. And now we're going to the stage to see Andre Franklin perform his piece, Views of Color, in 846. Mm. Huh. What's it like being a person of color in America? Uh, mm. so, uh, where do I begin? <laughs> uh, really not too sure. Um, let's, let's start off with the pen. No, the, the one you use on paper, not the one trapping our kin. The one that writes lies about history to cover our eyes like a brim and bury the truth in shadows like silhouettes on a scrim. You know, I have a couple questions about this land that we're in. And really take the time to listen, then answer me at the end. All right? Like, like how Klansmen claim Christian, but killing blacks is not a sin. We supposed to love each other, right? So how you lynch with a grin? This is America, so when was the great again? Now, would it be a different story if our shoes you walked in? Like, what if your son was killed for a hoodie he was wearing? Or what if your daughter was shot in her own home because of a call from a Karen? What if you were giving their eulogy about how your life has shattered, and from the crowd, someone yells, hey, buddy, all lives matter. 
What if you were told you can't live here because it's actually written in the laws? What if the pigment of your skin was used for just cause? What if a whole different race of people sailed up into your neighborhood, said, look what we found, y'all, and started taking all that they could? But here's the real kicker. What if they never leave? You do all you can to stop them, but your weapons are made from the trees. They've got spears that make thunder, but from their hands and never leaves, there's a stinging in your chest and you find it hard to breathe. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. Tie a noose around your own neck. I wonder how hard you'd squeeze. Put shackles on your son's arms and tell him their shirt sleeves. Take your wives, mothers, and daughters and have their way as they please now. They have to live with the trauma and the belly with foreign seed as they watch your last breath fall from your chest where you bleed. So what would you do? Hmm? How would you react? Could you walk around in Gucci if it fits you like that? The hardship of this plight I wouldn't wish on another, but someone made that wish and it landed on people of color. I, I can't even lie. Right here, I, I want to take a break because of all the pain we've endured to this venom called hate. But I can't. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah! <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. That's funny. You know what that means. <laughs> hey, but now that I have your attention, I need your help with some things. I need your help to find the words that I seek. So when I rhyme and take a pause, scream out the words that you think. No, no, really. No, scream it at me. Yeah, no. This part is interactive. Yep, it's, it's okay. It's, ah, hold, up. hold on, my people. Before we get geeked, we got things we need to correct. You know that stuff we don't speak? The things we learn from older folk who didn't know that they teach with their actions, not their words. So our eyes heard all of their speech. Like... Okay, like how do we have all of this sidewalk, but we still walk in the street? Take high blood pressure medication, but we won't change how we eat. Hey, she ain't got no daddy. What, dog? I bet she a freak. Make eye contact with a brother. You better look grim. Don't speak. Man, who taught us this? It's what we learned in the street. Now, God forbid that you smile, because now you either gay or a geek. Side note, don't you think either one of those people are weak? I know some cats that wear a skirt, but they'll delete your front teeth. And before you go to make fun of that smart kid who can't dance, don't forget they're the ones who designed the cell phones you use for your TikTok fans. Let's talk about some cycles that rotate like kebabs on a flame, because maybe if we speak on them, some of our choices might change. Like, like how we keep having babies with folk we don't like. The child looked just like them, so you pissed off on the sight of this angel that you brought here that night. You just wanted to bust a, mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, you nasty. But you know what? You right. You skinny dipped in that ocean, now you got a little tyke. And you blame it on the henny, cause that help you sleep at night, but the truth is you made your choice at condoms. Condoms? No, nah. nah, I'm all right. Treat the baby mama so bad, now male love just don't feel right. So what about this kid? Who they grow up to be like? The dad that's not there or the mama they speak like? Dress like, dance like, no woman in the fam got a man, so who you think this child gonna think like? I understand things happen. So I'm not saying that this is wrong or it's right. But the path of a child can change with both masculine and feminine insight. Yeah, yes, yes, like every area of life, balance is key. If non-biased wisdom is what you seek, then both sides you must see. Okay, if a cop is afraid of your skin and not treating you right, is it really the best option to put up that physical fight? Now, 
I know you really want to, cause that junk just not right, and your mama ain't raised no hoe, so for sure it'd be night night. And you know this wouldn't happen to you if your epidermis had been white, but is it really worth your pride if your kids don't see you tonight? Or ever again? Unless your name pops up on a hashtag, RIP to my friend. No, I hear you, yes, I, I hear you. It's, Bro, bro, you lying. There are plenty of us who complied and we still ended up dying. As sad as that is, I can't deny that it's true. And I really don't know exactly what to say to help you get through the situation and get you back to your crew, but 60 shots from four cops and their Glock 22, that's some real sad math when it's divided in you. And it's a vicious double standard. Yeah, I hate it too. But to see our loved one's face again, that chump burger? Yeah, we chew. Racism is a real sick fight, so use your brain to get through because not all heavyweight bouts are guaranteed around two. I guess that's why some cops try to heal it with a shot like the flu. Sad part is they got families just like you. But they'd rather take your life and see their wife. So tell me, what should you do? Others may think I'm lying. But you know that is true. Now, with that in mind, protect you and your seed. If that means this one time smile and move slow, then so be it. You can't scream at a graduation if you're not alive to see it. And the wild part is, these are thoughts they'll probably never have. They'll bust a cop square in the mouth, take the squad car, and then laugh as they are taken into custody without a knot or a gash. You kneel for that because you're black, and they Kaepernick your face mask. But until the laws change, our rule is to survive. Because I, 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 I'm staying a lot, staying. Dang. I guess that's a moment of silence for all of those who couldn't finish that saying. And we want to let you know that for your families, we are still praying. Okay, listen, I, I have to say this right here, and, and some of y'all might get mad, but I can only speak from the experiences that I've had. And it might be tough to see with social media eyes, so listen to me with your heart and tell me if they're lies. Not all cops are bad. Not all black people grow up with no dad. Not all white people are evil. Not all black people steal. And for us to think that racism is not being taught, then that's just not being real. Children mimic what they see, so let's show them how to heal. Because if we don't and if we won't, the blood continues to spill. This is America. And I'm going to tell you when it's great. When kids from different races play together because they haven't learned hate. When we can learn to illuminate our country as being more than just black and white. Because our native, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, and Asian family all deserve to be in this light. So does every nationality that lays their head here at night. So, do we really want to fix the problem? Or do we just want to fight? Think about who you love the most in this world. For whom you give up your life. Now treat everyone around you with that exact same kind of love. Now that's what great again looks like. So can we do that? Can we all do that? 
Will we do that? Will you do that? Now you can answer. I'm listening. Hmm. It is a privilege to not only be in the theater, but to be in the theater and witness such a powerful performance by Henri Franklin. And I'm sitting with Henri here now. What inspired the writing besides you being a person of color? Mm -hmm. Well, this piece was born out of a question, what if my son asked, what is it like being a person of color? And literally one night, I couldn't sleep at like four in the morning. I just picked up my phone and just started going and Views of Color in 846 was birthed. The George Floyd mm -hmm. murder popped open so much. Right. I, I wonder how did it, could, did you write, you wrote this piece following that, right? How, yes. did, how did it affect you before you were asked to write the piece? Uh, the George Floyd moment was very bittersweet for me. To watch someone executed like that in front of everyone's eyes it was very disturbing, um, but at the same time, that was something we have been screaming about for a long time. It was bitter because of how graphic it was, but it was sweet because of the outcome and the, the outrage, and it really felt like, oh my God, the world is actually listening to us now. Yes. I don't love the fact that it came at the expense of George's life. I do not, but I am grateful for what the outcome was. I just wish maybe there was another way for it to happen, you know? What was the journey to the piece? So the piece is based on my personal experience as a black man in America. And it was very important to me not to tell someone what to do or what not to do in the piece. It was literally just to ask a question. Sometimes to get the response you want out of someone is to just ask them some questions and let them answer it. And so what do you want people to take from your performance, from your message? The world can change only if we change ourselves individually. So it's, it's like one person at a time. And you start with empathy, you start with love, and that will allow you to hear another human. Like hear them first, before you judge them, hear them as a human. Hear them as a son or a daughter. Start there. And now we're gonna have a conversation with John Sloan III, who was director for the piece. What was it like to work with the words and work with the artists and work with that human being? It was really just about working with Henri to try to get to the truth of the piece. Um, and he's so good and he's so talented that you really wanna make sure, he's somebody, he goes from, from you know, zero to 60 very quickly. That's 60 to 100, right? Like the, the difference between a good performance and a great performance is really in detail work, it's in nuance. Um, and oftentimes that's what a, an actor needs a director to do, right? To ask questions, to try to pull out those individual beats, um, not to make choices for them, but to really investigate how they're making those choices for themselves. And were you always strong as you were working with Henri? Or what, were there times as a black man that it that it, it affected you on some level. I'd be lying if I said there weren't moments, whether we were in rehearsal, whether it's when I was preparing um, for rehearsal or just sitting in the shoot, where it hits you. Because the, you know those are moments that you deal with. Henri and I had a conversation and I said, I remember the first time I was handcuffed for no reason. And I remember the first time I was put down on a police car and patted down for no reason. And that's something that unfortunately, um, every black man of a certain age remembers. That's a, that's, uh, it's a common experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the reason that George Floyd's murder uh, was so resonant. And that's part of the reason why this piece, I think, is so effective. So uh, is there any message that you want to leave the viewers as being director, artist, 
I would encourage everyone to continue to patron Detroit Public Theater, to continue to patron all the other theater companies and arts organizations in and around Detroit, because that's how we have these conversations. That's how we can open ourselves up and start to learn more about cultures adjacent to ours or completely separate um, and apart from ourselves. Um, and that's how we can begin to, to grow and in a lot of instances begin to heal. So thank you very much, John Sloan III. Now, we're going back to the stage and experience a performance by Eric Gutman, his own piece, From Broadway to Obscurity. I'm high above the city I'm standing on the ledge The view from here is pretty As I step off the edge And now I'm falling, baby, through the sky Through the sky I'm falling, baby, through the sky It's my calling, baby, don't you cry, don't you cry I'm falling down through the sky Toward the street that I'm from Oh, Broadway, here I come Broadway, here I come The pressure, it increases The closer that I get I can almost fall to pieces But I'm not quite there yet See, I've been brave in crazy weather I've been drowning out my cries I pull myself together And I'm focused on the prize I'm falling, baby, through the sky Through the sky I'm falling, baby, through the sky It's my calling, baby Don't you cry, don't you cry I'm falling down through the sky And it's a tune you can hum Oh, Broadway, here I come Mm -hmm. Will I remain the same or will I change a little bit? Will I feel broken or totally complete? Will I retain my name when I'm the biggest, hugest hit? Or will I blend in with the rest of the street? The people all are pointing I bet they never guess That the saint that they're anointing Is frightened of the mess And even though I fear it I'm playing all my cards Baby, you are gonna hear it When I give them my regards I'm falling, baby, through the sky Through the sky I'm falling, baby, through the sky It's my calling, baby Don't you cry, don't you cry I'm falling down through the sky And I refuse to go numb Oh, Broadway, here I come Broadway, here I come Broadway, here I come Broadway, Broadway, here I come Here I come And the last thing I hear As the impact grows near Is it a scream or a cheer? 
Well, never mind, I'll never find out, cause Broadway, I am here. Thank you for being with us on Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove. I appreciate the work Detroit Public Theater is doing in and around our community. Not only do they bring creative and entertaining shows, they give us thought-provoking pieces too. You better believe I'm gonna check them out in their new space as soon as possible. And when I see you there, let's wave and say hello to each other. Now make sure to join us next time on Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove, right here, where we promise to bring you fantastic performances. I can't wait to see you when you come back. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, the DeRoy Testamentary Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.